stress is no longer an issue because when we started the year or some months ago, last year when it was ending, it was a big issue. We were wondering, will we really um, make sure that at least by June we have paid this? But now we have. Uh, we are remaining with a, a, a few, a couple of monies in order for us to finish. So can we say this is a, is a good thing for the country going forward? Well, um, first of all, let me say that we are not yet out of debt distress. Mm -hmm. Because this repayment, uh, the repayment of this euro board, is, um, is just a, a piece of the overall national debt, public debt that we have. It is only that it was falling due. It is a single uh, bullet payment that mm -hmm. was coming uh, into play. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas um, our economy was not doing well, the shilling was losing. And so, you know, let's say we, we borrowed the $2 billion that, you know, uh, when the shilling was at 100, yes. and now it's at 150, for example, we, that's where we were headed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was an increase of like 50 billion, you know, um, uh, in, bet in between. Now, significantly, if you look at the euro boards um, maturing from this year, we have a pipeline of euro boards um, all the way to 20, 2048, equivalent to uh, almost uh, $7.1 billion or, there, um, uh, or, or thereabout. Mm -hmm. So when we think about debt distress, we are not looking at because we have paid this euro board. We are looking at the entire macro um, situation, the entire economy. How much is our public debt? Our public debt is $11 trillion. Mm -hmm. We have only paid 200 billion, you know, 300, give or take, 218 billion or, or thereabout. So th that's literally, we are, we are talking, um, we're talking about 2% of, yes. 2 of, of our public debt. But when you think about, um, about public debt and distress, uh, the reason why we're still at uh, our distress levels are still high is because we have breached what we call. Um, the, sus the debt sustainability mm -hmm. um, analysis indicators. Mm -hmm. You know, how much is our revenue against uh, our debt? Yes. You know, what is our GDP against, uh, against uh, public debt? Mm -hmm. So that's it. But going to the market was very significant mm -hmm. for the economy. Mm -hmm. Whereas we've got, um, we've got this at a higher, uh, higher rate than the rest of the countries who went to the market, like uh, Cote d'Ivoire, for example. It, it's also it's a dose of some bit of confidence on the Kenyan economy, uh, signific signifying that we are not going to default. Mm -hmm. So let's say that for this particular payment, which was a bullet payment, we are not going to default as a country. Okay. So that's what we were telling the market. Mm -hmm. But it has come at a price. Mm -hmm. and, and that price is, you know, the other one was at 6.75% or thereabout, but now we are paying at 10.75, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for, uh, for this particular one. Mm -hmm. So that's the way we need to look at it. Uh, and that, you know, um, uh, the government taking us to the market, making that decision, is testing the market and saying, you know, I mean, Cote d'Ivoire went there and they got at 8%. Yes. We've got it at digital, um, at digit, double digit. Mm -hmm. But this was one of the key things. Uh, we, we launched a publication in January. Uh, and Eurobot was one of the key things we've been tracking on how this was going to span out. Okay. Yeah. Very well explained. And now, still on this issue, um, when we look at the amount that uh, we paid, of course, 1.5 billion uh, US dollars, it was gotten from somewhere. And now, meaning we have borrowed in order for us to clear this, um, the, the euro bond. So what happens now? Because at the end of the day, we have gone and, and, and borrowed the 1.5 billion and to, to service this other one. So what happens to this other, the, the one that we've borrowed? Because now that one also uh, doesn't mean that we are really out of the woods. So essentially what happens most of the time is that uh, for, for, for what we've seen, commercial financing for government, Governments do not pay off debt. They refinance the debt. Mm -hmm. You borrow Peter to pay James. Okay. Right? And literally, that's what, what has happened. So, uh, and that's why we're saying we are not out of the de debt distress per se, because uh, we have just kicked the can down the road. Mm. And this one, we have added ourselves another, uh, what, another eight years? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, falling due in 2031, mm -hmm. but with a provision for amortization from 2029, mm -hmm. so that, you know, we could pay, you know, um, uh, $500 uh, million, 
500 million dollars in those uh, until until we clear it off mm -hmm. but also within that time what happened is that you know we get to that point and if you are unable to to, to, to pay we have not generated enough tax revenue mm -hmm. uh, we um, we end up paying for example let me give you a scenario mm -hmm. our tax collection revenue between July uh, July and January this year we, we collected around 1.2 trillion uh, Kenya shillings in those uh, seven months uh, if you look at our debt repayment and consolidated fund uh, services releases, it's around 800 billion. Mm -hmm. So we are left only with 400 billion to service, you know, it's the counties, and that's why you find county payments are, you know, are very delayed, uh, you know, salaries, recurrent expenditure, and also we find we do not have sufficient resources for development expenditure. Because the debt repayment is a fast charge on our taxes. Mm -hmm. In a moment for every 100 shillings you pay, you know, the first chilling that will be got out of that, for example, has to go and pay the debt that we owe. Yeah, that's and, a I saw, and I saw uh, the percentage has, has now increased. It's uh, all, almost around 70, 73%. Every 100 shilling, 73% goes to... Uh, tax payments. To, ta to, to, to the payments. Yeah. So therefore, um, it means that we are really still in the... We are not out yet. Yeah, we, it, we, we need to do much more with regards to our taxation environment. Okay. To be able to bring more people into mm -hmm. the tax, uh, tax bracket. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, um, we've seen the medium term revenue strategy that was uh, released by National Treasury, giving propositions that will ensure, um, you know, will ensure that we are bringing more people into the conversation. And these conversations include, you know, uh, carbon tax, for example, how do we, you know, you know, like circulation tax, you know, more tax on cars, mm -hmm. uh, reintroducing um, a minimum tax, for example, uh, and that's why you see if I, the government is very aggressive. Uh, the E-teams, you know, function to ensure that each and every person comes into the tax conversation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we need to ask ourselves, what are government revenue sources? Mm. It is only tax, mm -hmm. debt, and grants, mm -hmm. right? And you cannot drive on debt and grants. Yes. You have to generate your own revenue, mm -hmm. and that is tax. And that's why we see how aggressive the government has uh, has become. But I, you know, we want to think our our economy uh, last year. You know, it grew, uh, and that's give you know that uh, five point uh, one or so uh, growth, and which was mainly driven by agriculture. Mm -hmm. It means there's something light that the government did. You know, that the, the fertilizer subsidy, for example, worked to a greater extent mm -hmm. because we, if you look at the numbers. The growth in agriculture was among the most notable than fishing, as per the uh, KNBS reports. Yes, and I think then that gives um, there's some hope. But as we have said, when it comes to the eurobond conversation, the public debt conversation, come back to it. We ask ourselves, are we really out of there? We are not. Mm -hmm. We just kick the can down the road. But the most important thing is that there is political goodwill to do the hard thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on and look at, uh, of course, uh, a big, uh, a big issue, especially when it comes to uh, the dollar and uh, and how the Kenyan shilling is performing now with the activities that happened um, a couple of weeks last week and also the other week. Uh, we saw the repayment of the euro bond. So could it be that the repayment was the one that um, really contributed to the shilling um, at, at least becoming strong against the dollar? Well, uh, from where we sit, we don't think. It was, it was that. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, we, we, we have to understand, we don't even think that um, that Euro board, uh, uh, the 1.5 billion, yes. hit our accounts locally. Mm -hmm. Because also, we need to know uh, where, first of all, was it floated. I think it was in the Irish Stock Exchange. Yes. So the repayments majorly was foreign, in, uh, foreign investors into the, into the Euro board. So that, um, that financing, properly, it's, it's not that we can, it's sentiment, it's market sentiments. But also we need to understand that there was an infrastructure board that was on sale around mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. And there was heavy inflow from the diaspora. The government went to the market looking for 70 billion. They got what? They got uh, 280 billion. Mm -hmm. I think out of that, they, they took in some 240 billion because of, uh, because of the, the yields. So, right? so um, come to think about it, it was more driven by, um, by inflows, you know, markets, you know, the subscriptions, yeah, because the money has not hit our account. And also, uh, we need to ask and, say, and, and check uh, how, how, was, how was our current account and our month uh, of uh, import cover. Mm -hmm. Was there that there was possibility that there was extra money that came in from, for example, from, from IMF and World Bank, 
and is it possi possible that you know, uh, you know, uh, central bank also uh, had a lot to play on it in mm. terms of uh, softening the market? Yes, I, I think those are there are some critical fu you know, fundamentals we need to ask ourselves. What really drove the chilling to appreciate that rapidly, mm -hmm. and has it stayed so since yes. then? That's yes. a question. Yeah, and even as we come to a conclusion now. Um, when we look at the week-to-week -week activities, of course, we've spoken about the bonds, we've spoken about the euro bond, the repayment. Um, when that settles, when all this settles, um, to, to just follow up on the question that you've asked, will the momentum of the shilling still remain, um, uh, continue to where um, it's still uh, holding as strong as it is? Because at the end of the day, if these activities did contribute, um, what will this, uh, what, how will, will the shilling behave after all this ends now? When you look at maybe next month, where will we be in terms of um, looking at the shilling and the dollar from where you sit? What do you, th what do you think will happen? I think the, ch the shilling is not yet out of the woods. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, we uh, give a practical example. Uh, Safaricom issued an interim dividend yes. uh, notice. Mm -hmm. Uh, who are the majority shareholders in Safaricom and all major institutions? The government is there, but yes. also heavy foreign investors. Mm -hmm. You're not going to pay, to pay foreign investors with Kenya shillings. You're going to fight the dollars in the market. Mm -hmm. The government still has to come to the market to look for you know, uh, dollars to pay for our uh, oil import uh, bill. Uh, the G2G is foreign due. Uh, and we also have uh, installments falling due um, on, on some of our public debt obligations, you know, come, in, I think, this, this March and April. So uh, there is still some bit of aggressive pressure on the on the Kenya shilling but we also look forward to uh, uh, government commitment for example on investment like on our tourist tourism industry mm -hmm. it is one of the most like uh, investment destinations we invest more we attract more tourists because they are going to spend hard uh, cash you know hard currency mm -hmm. in our economy so the chilling needs to be su supported but they are the fundamentals still uh, whatever drove it uh, uh, down uh, depreciating when it did uh, are still still life Mm -hmm. You know th those elements still like and needs to be supported. But the most important thing is recognizing that we've seen government coming out strongly, and and and, and sending out some positive uh, signals to the markets mm -hmm. that we are here. You know uh, that we are here to support uh, to support the economy. We we are going to invest in the in the right spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to make difficult decisions, uh, and that and but part of the decisions they are not making is, for example, fiscal consolidation. We still have a very large government consuming unnecessary uh, resources because mm -hmm. we don't have a revenue problem. We just have an expenditure problem. So we are pushing pressure on the chilling from all corners. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the leadership needs, needs to address. All right. Thank you so much uh, for giving us your insights. That is uh, James Muraguri, who is the CEO Institute of Public Finance, speaking to us about the eurobond and also public debt and just telling us we are not out of the woods yet. Therefore, we're just going to go for a short break. When we come back, we're also going to be looking at a very um, important issue that 